And right now, police in Baltimore say they are monitoring social media for any calls for marches or protests into this evening. The city's curfew will go back into effect tonight at 10 p.m. Police say nearly 100 officers have been injured since Monday. And today, Maryland State Attorney General Marilyn Mosby says she has received the file on Freddie Gray's death and her office has already started its own independent investigation. We have team coverage from Baltimore tonight with Horace Holmes and Kevin Lewis, but let's start with Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell and the exclusive details from the police report that you heard first here on 7 about two hours ago. Brad, tell us about it. Well, Allison, you know, a week and a half ago, we heard from Mayor Rawlings, Stephanie Rawlings Blake here, in no uncertain terms that their focus was on what happened inside the police transport van. She said they knew that Freddie Gray was okay when he got in the van and wasn't when he got out. Now we know a little bit more from our law enforcement sources as to why they believe that to be the case. According to our law enforcement sources, an autopsy found on Freddie Gray's head a mark on the top of his head that matched a place on the back of the police transport van, specifically a bolt. Now, they describe Freddie Gray as having handcuffs behind his back and legs in shackles. The theory is that he was in the back of the van, very low headroom, standing over like this, and for some reason went flying in the van, and that is what caused his injuries. Now, this is all preliminary and this is from police we asked the office of the medical examiner to comment on this this afternoon and they're saying they cannot comment on ongoing investigations and they don't do preliminary reports but the police are telling us that their file is now over with the state's attorney the state's attorney says the investigation in from her end is now underway and a decision will be made down the road as to whether or not the officers involved will be charged. Clearly the focus is on the police officer who was driving the van that day. Now we're near the new Shiloh Baptist Church where the funeral was held for Freddie Gray. Just a little while ago there was a summit. Reverend Al Sharpton, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. She says whatever happens justice will be done. We will get justice for Freddie Gary. Believe you me, we will get justice. And we're going to do it because we're going to work together. Well, they're going to work together. You know, I just want to give you a live scene. West Baltimore here. It is a pretty night. It's cooled down a little bit. And we see absolutely no sign of any problems. A very peaceful, very normal evening in Baltimore. Back to you. All right. That is good to hear, Brad. Meanwhile, right now, protesters are on the streets of Baltimore again, peacefully. Uh, we have this live picture from News Chopper 7 as they march along Pennsylvania Avenue uh, to City Hall. Two protests are planned for this weekend in Baltimore as well. One march and rally is set to start at City Hall at 2 p.m. Organizers say they will make their way through the city until about 7, but they have not specified a route. Then on Sunday, another march is planned at 3 o'clock. Organizers of that say they're not sure yet where they'll start, but they plan to end at the city jail. Leon? Allison, owners of stores across Baltimore are still hoping for some sort of justice after scenes like this one that we saw play out earlier in the week. But the owner of this particular store says that she'd even settle for just the looters feeling badly about what they did. Horace Holmes is live in the city in crisis. He's got her story. Horace. This is Hey Kim's store here in East Baltimore, and the looters just pried open their security fence right here, busted the window out, and went in. Talked to Miss Kim earlier today, and she says the surveillance video was rolling in there. She wants the people who came inside to see themselves because she wants them to think about what they did. When Hey Kim first saw the surveillance video from her beauty supplies store Tuesday morning, she bowed her head and cried. I feel so bad. Kim grew up in this East Baltimore store her parents opened 28 years ago. They build this business little by little. She's taking over the business from them. It, the community was my family. You know, I really felt comfortable here. But Monday night, that feeling of community and family was destroyed when hundreds of looters broke through her store security gates, smashed a window, and came pouring in. For the next several hours, they carried off the life bread of a proud family and an important staple to this community. Where are we? Where else are we going to go? This is so convenient. Y'all look out for us. Everyone knows the Kims here today, customers, 
neighbors stop by to voice their outrage and offer their help. Police also stopped by to finish filing reports and gather the security video. Authorities hope some of those responsible, those seen here, can be found and arrested. Hey, Kim doesn't hold that hope, but she does want these images seen. Just so that people could realize, like, what have I done? But I don't want to have whole garages or anything. I want to forgive. Now, there are five businesses, not just the Kims, in this strip mall, down this row, that were opened up by looters who went inside and took goods. Talk to all of the store owners. They are not seeking any revenge or justice. They just want an opportunity to rebuild. In East Baltimore, Horace Holmes, ABC 7 News.